I always find it quite astounding that we don't understand something as basic as how stars are forming. I really love the mystery aspect of it. I love that you can make a contribution to such a fundamental issue. Hi, Alex. Hi, Shari. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I went to the University of Tasmania and um, really enjoyed maths and physics. I had an excellent lecturer who was very interested in radio astronomy, so ended up using some of those radio telescopes for some projects and it all started from there. This is the Parkes 64 metre radio telescope. It's quite unique in its structure. You can see that there's a tower below where the actual dish part is sitting. So when you observe from here, you sit in that tower, you can feel the dish move, you can hear it move. It's just a really wonderful telescope. It was really intimidating coming here for the first time. It's such a big telescope and you know that it's so important, the observations that you're making. Um, some of the, the hardest, gruelling shifts, getting up at 2.30 in the morning, but still really enjoying it because it's such a pleasure to be here. When you think about how a galaxy is made up of many stars, you can see that, that everything is kind of tied together. If you don't understand how a star forms, then there are many other things that you don't understand. So it's very important for many fields in astrophysics. So when you look up in the night sky, you see a lot of stars. Some of those are quite small, like our sun, some even smaller, but some get to eight or many more times the mass of our sun. And those are the ones that I'm really interested in. A lot of my work has uh, been focused around trying to trace out the evolution of high mass stars. High mass stars can be quite difficult to study because they form in these regions of really dense gas and dust. So what's that emission I see over there? That's um, one of the methanol mazes from the methanol multi-beam survey. I use mazes in my work predominantly. Mazes you can think of as like a radio equivalent of a laser and these are formed naturally in the regions where high mass stars are forming. So what we think that we can do is use these mazes and the different types that are produced to trace out the timeline. If we can do that, then we can start placing all these high mass stars onto that timeline and trying to work out how those regions are evolving and then be able to hand pick very special sources from those objects to then follow up with very thorough observations at many different wavelengths with a lot of different telescopes around the world. And hopefully that will enable us to work out how these big stars are forming. Astronomy is a very competitive field, so receiving the L'Oreal Fellowship is really important to allow me to remain competitive within this field. It's not just the award and the recognition that that gives to me, it also gives me the ability to bring internationally respected astronomers to Australia to work on this issue with me.